The Narcissist, Urging Death. Hello, I'm H.G. Judah. I have explained in my video why the narcissist wants you dead. The interaction between the narcissist and a victim with regard to the possibility of a narcissist killing that person. And I would encourage you to watch that video to understand more of the narcissist mindset as per different sub-schools. Another issue is not that of whether the narcissist would actively seek to kill somebody, but of the fact of them urging that somebody kills themselves. This is something that is quite common with regard to a form of devaluation. For instance, Chrissy Teigen Tegan Targan, who urged a young lady to kill herself, showing her absence of emotional empathy, the malign behaviour, the lack of accountability for those behaviours, when she issued such a message towards that young person. It's done as a form of devaluation. The narcissist has no emotional empathy for that victim, whether they're a tertiary source, a secondary source, and more commonly, where they're the primary source, the intimate partner, primary source. And thus the narcissist, as part of that devaluing behavior, will not only urge that an individual kill themselves, but also their narcissism will recognize where that person is vulnerable. It might be that they've had a history of suicidal ideation. It might be, for instance, that they have made such noises about taking their own life beforehand. And therefore, the narcissist with no emotional empathy will try and use that against that victim, taking a weakness, taking a vulnerability, and throwing it in the face of the victim. The narcissist goads their victims with such threats, not necessarily because the narcissist expects the victim to go ahead with it, but it's done, of course, to provoke a reaction, to cause that victim to become upset, providing negative fuel to the narcissist, thus demonstrating that they are under control and also providing potent negative fuel from that victim. When it's stated, the actual aim of the narcissism isn't to bring about death. It is, in fact, to bring about fuel and the response showing they're under control because that is the prime aims. As I've explained elsewhere, the death of a victim is actually contrary to what a narcissist requires because they will no longer be under control and they can no longer provide any fuel character traits or residual benefits because they are dead. There is much more for the narcissist in having the victim stay alive. But in that moment, in that precise moment where the narcissist's control is being threatened, then they may well turn around and say to somebody, oh, just kill yourself, oh, off yourself, etc., in order to get that control in that moment and to draw the fuel. An instance of this has been reported on in the Mail Online, where attorney for girlfriend who goaded veteran boyfriend into suicide with barrage of evil texts telling him to kill himself says they were immoral but not criminal. The article by Paul Farrell tells us, the lawyer for the woman accused of driving an army veteran to suicide with a series of vitriolic text messages believes that the case does not rise to criminality. Now, this isn't a debate about whether her conduct is criminal or such like, but it's more an examination of what are behaviours that are likely to be dealt with or doled out by a narcissist. Sending a series of vitriolic test messages would invariably fall under hoovering where it's done by a narcissist and their, benign, their malign rather follow-up hoovers, incremental attempts to assert control over that individual and draw fuel from them. Attorney Phil De Lucente told DailyMail.com that Mandy Roish, 35, has been released from jail in Westmoreland County in Pennsylvania on bond. 
she faces charges of aiding suicide and harassment. Her estranged boyfriend, Kevin Metzger, 37, and the father of her daughter, took his own life in June 2021 after receiving a barrage of vile and abusive messages from Roish while she was away on military training. While he was away, rather, on military training, prosecutors say. These heinous messages allegedly included a video of the suspect having sex with another man. Although they were undoubtedly estranged at that time, and thus there was no longer a relationship between them, the fact that she has recorded a video of her having sex shows a level of self-absorption, but then she triangulates the ex-partner with this video, with the other man, by saying, look, here's me having sex with somebody else. I suspect, although we may find out more about this in the body of the article, that she disengaged from her former boyfriend, casting him to one side, and that he may well still have strong feelings for her, particularly because they have a child together, and that her sending a video of her having sex with somebody else is naturally going to hurt and upset him, resulting in provocative responses and the provision of fuel. The attorney also rejected comparisons between the allegations in the 2014 case of Conrad Roy, then 18, and Michelle Carter, then 17. In 2017, Carter was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter after it emerged that she sent Roy text messages encouraging him to commit suicide. He ended his life via carbon monoxide poisoning. Carter was released from prison in 2020. De Lucente said that prosecutors are comparing the two cases. Carter was actually telling him, reinforcing him to do it, planning it, the methods and the means. You don't have any of that here. What you have is an emotional relationship between two persons involving their child, the attorney said. The lawyer said that the messages sent by Roish to Metzger could be considered immoral. I do not see it fitting a criminal charges such aiding a suicide. There was no coercion, duress, there was no methods and means, he said. There's always two sides to a story, and our side of the story we told in the course of this case, he added. Now, naturally, he's going to say those things not only because he has to defend this individual, but moreover, it may well be correct that the behaviour doesn't reach the culpability of criminality. But that isn't the point of this examination. The point of this examination is that she engaged in this behaviour, which shows a complete absence of emotional empathy, and also to provide you with an opportunity to understand the mindset of the narcissist in behaving in such a way. Roish of Greenberg is due back in court for another pre-trial hearing on June 27th. Prosecutors have been investigating Metzger's death for two years. Officials said his suicide note that began with the words, maybe she was right, as well as posting on his Facebook page, detailed the trail of torment and solicitation that he was allegedly put through by Roish. In a press release, prosecutors also called the messages she sent Metzger as heinous and graphic. In court documents, Roish is referred to as Metzger's on-again, off-again girlfriend. That, of course, is demonstrative of the narcissistic dynamic. He's the intimate partner primary source. She disengages from him. He becomes the former intimate partner primary source. Then she hoovers him back in and they start up again. And then she gets rid of him. And he, not knowing what he's dealing with, faces this push and pull, the on-off relationship that is so common to narcissists. At a press conference, trooper Steve Limani called the bullying that Metzger endured as some of the worst he's ever seen. Bullying is a form of rudimentary manipulation. This is next level, or most extreme amount of bullying I've seen, read about, heard about, where somebody is constantly telling someone to end their life, Limani said. I think he means repeatedly, but the point being that this was done on a frequent basis. Again, through malign follow-up hoovers, demonstrating a lack of emotional empathy, a lack of accountability. The messages from Roish began in May 2021, while Metzger was away at military training. The suspect was at home at the time with the couple's daughter, the criminal complaint states. In texts sent via WhatsApp, hoovering, Roish said that she was planning to move in with another man, threatened loss, 
that the man would become their daughter's new father, threat and loss, and that Metzger would no longer be a part of her life, threat and loss, also triangulation with another person. I hope, for their daughter's sake, that you do kill yourself. She will be better off not even knowing you, Royce wrote, according to documents. Provocation. On Mother's Day 2021, she texted Metzger to say she would be having sex with her new partner, triangulation, as their daughter calls him daddy, triangulation with person again. Another message said that Metzger would burn in hell and that she would be dancing on his grave. Following an argument over money, argumentativeness, Royce then sent Metzger a video of her having sex with another man, triangulation with person, provocation, and destroyed some of his belongings, destruction of property, provocation. She was first charged with harassment in June 2021 when Metzger made an initial complaint. Following his suicide, those charges went away. I actually want you to kill yourself because I think you are the worst person on this planet, another message read. I will make it my dying wish to make sure you don't see your daughter and that she knows who you really are, read another. While another read, I hope you burn in hell and my daughter will dance on your grave with her real dad. Never talk to us again. Die slow and suffer. During the investigation, older messages surfaced. In December 2020, she told him, So glad I used you for what little money you have. That was the only good thing you've ever done for me and the kids. Your money. Goading, taunting, provocation, residual benefit. In June 2020, she told herself, told him rather, Go kill yourself. You aren't a real fucking man. Metzger was found dead on the June 18th, 2021, two days before Father's Day. He was found after a friend asked police to perform a welfare check. Messages in the lead-up to Father's Day show Royce saying he wouldn't be allowed to see his daughter, threat and loss. A friend of Metzger's told police that he had asked her to ensure that the messages he was receiving get known to the world. After his death, Royce deleted WhatsApp from her phone, police said. Mr Metzger may still be here today if those messages did not influence and encourage him to take his own life, Westmoreland County, Nicole Zaccarelli said in a statement. Zuccarelli described the messages as being continuous and unrelenting, repeated Hoover's, only ending when Metzger took his own life at the age of 37. We extend our condolences to the Metzger family for their loss and the grief they have experienced since his death. We will not allow or tolerate this kind of egregious behaviour, the DA added. According to his obituary, Metzger served in the U.S. Army for nearly 20 years, including a period in South Korea where he worked on the Patriot Missile Defense System. Following his time in the U.S. Army, he re-enlisted in the Reserve, specializing in water purification. He's referred to as a selfless and dedicated friend who loved the outdoors and live music. At the time of his death, he'd been working as a bartender. Above all, though, he passionately cared for his daughter. He was a devoted father, and she was an extreme light in his life. The tribute also says... Roish is is charged with aiding suicide, a felony and harassment, a misdemeanour. She will make her first appearance in court on June 27th. It's highly likely that the behaviour of Roish demonstrates that she is a narcissist to behave in a repeated manner towards this man, who does not appear to have done anything objectively wrong towards her, other than, of course, to have become involved with the narcissist. In such circumstances... She repeatedly hoovered him in a malign way, provoking him, triangulating him with other men, making threats with regard to the loss of his daughter, and of course urging him to take his own life. Repeated behaviours over a stained period of time that would support the fact that she was likely to be a narcissist. Moreover, demonstrates another form of manipulation that is utilised. As I explained earlier on, Roish was not particularly interested in whether he died or not. Subconsciously, what she required was a reaction to the awful and callous urgings that she issued. Whether he died or not was simply not something that was contemplated at the time of issuing those threats against him. Instead, her narcissism wanted a response to show that he was under control and to get fuel from him. Whether he died or not was not actually the aim of those messages. This is because it's highly likely from the information that's been provided that we can see that Roish is an unaware narcissist and she would operate so much in the moment. Indeed, it also is counterproductive to what she needed. She required money from him and therefore if he dies, 
she wouldn't get that any longer, that residual benefit. An aware narcissist may indeed have the aim of causing the death of an individual. But for the unaware narcissist, whether that actually happens or not is a side issue. They are focused on what is happening in the moment, namely to get fuel and control. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.